Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself a Cherry Pagoda. Without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. Starting off, I now have a 21 by 21 by 4 brick of deep sweet bricks, and then I have some bamboo mosaic on top. And this is going to be a little bit expensive, you do not need to make it solid though, so that should help deal with the costs. If it helps to, you don't need the top either since it's going to have a floor placed on top of it immediately. Now, I've segmented this build into these, well, segments, and the reason I'm doing this is so that way I can figure out where I want the support builders to go, because if you look at a pagoda, you know how it always has those roofs that go on top of the lower layers. Well, I need a spot for those support pillars. So segment this thing, and then we're also going to need a staircase up to it. Whether you want a grand staircase going right up, or a wraparound is up to you. But it really determines what you're going to do with the foundation, since I'm not going to leave it as this. Essentially, think about your landscape, and then consider what are your options. Potentially, you might be able to include some foliage and other extra landscaping on top of your landscape. Now, I'm starting to get some of the more fundamental things in here, and I recommend using nether brick since it has a fence variant that no other block can replicate with walls or wood. So what you want to do is go down to your foundation, and you're going to notice a little different thing. And you don't have to follow this, but I recommend watching the tutorial in its entirety before making all your changes final. You might want to dig into your foundation real quick and build this in front of it, where I use some stairs and then more upside down stairs and put some fences on top of it. It might work really well depending on your landscape design. I'm probably going to do a little bit of a koi pool all around it with more nether brick, so this might work, especially since I can waterlog things, so keep that in mind. And now what you want to do is start building the staircase, it doesn't have to be anything too crazy. All you need to do is make sure it's traversable. Now up here, for my segmentation gaps, as a little bit of a mix up for the flooring and as a guide, I filled them in with bamboo planks. Nothing too crazy, but this will help guide me build the rest of the build. And then when I put in my segments like this, it might be a little tough so it's probably better to just keep counting, you want to start your walls with a darker white block. I recommend mushroom stem, it works really well. However, if you want to add windows, you're going to have to replace the whole thing, since the poor texture, the problems of working with mushrooms. So be very careful about that, but otherwise, you can start building the inner section right there, and then we have the flooring all around, and then we can have that segmentation going all around as well. Now, I've further segmented this build, and while typically that method can get really repetitive, Pagodas are quite square builds, so it actually doesn't matter that much. Then, you'll want to start building your staircase, and this one's finished, I used some stairs, you can do it two facing each other or to the same orientation, so yeah, I'm going to be changing it, so that way they both look like the other side, and essentially, try making your own staircase if you want, I highly recommend it since it can be pretty hard to see with all these nether bricks. Then create a smaller version of your foundation here, and place three blocks of clay. You can waterlog this whole place, and when you do, well, you can create a nice little pond. Don't forget your drip leaf, and some other blocks. If you can, maybe even try bamboo. But with all of this in place, you'll have a nice foundation, and then you can start going up here. While I haven't fully devised the palette for this segment here, so, I highly recommend the darker white blocks. With some foliage now in place using lily pads, sea grass, some small drift leaf, and sea pickles, now this place will look especially nice. Especially if it's in a cherry grove due to the watercolor, although building this in a cherry grove isn't actually necessary. And now for the walls, you'll notice I made a pretty drastic change. Instead of doing white with the first layers, instead I did some mangrove with crimson trapdoors overlaid. And this might seem counterintuitive, aren't the walls supposed to be white? Well that's what I was thinking until I realized something. 
If the first floor is darker, then it makes it seem taller from a distance due to factors I am not willing to explain at the moment. But essentially, make your first floor darker. And then, you should provide ample space between the first and second floors. Something like this, maybe four blocks or so. And then you'll also need a balcony. And afterwards, your first instinct would probably be, well, it's time to build the roof, and that's what I did. Unfortunately, that's not how that works. If you try building the roof now, you're going to run into some major space issues. So I recommend building the whole pagoda without roofs for now. Go up three or four blocks and then build a smaller version of this. Instead of doing 333, you might want to do something, well, I should probably grab a more distinct block. How about grass for now? What if you're to do something like this? It's pretty simple. You can see it gets a little bit smaller. And then you can perpetually decrease this over and over, as long as the central area is the same size. And then you can go down to 3, 1, and then you can potentially do something like this, although you might have varying results. So yeah, I'm starting to make a fool of myself. So essentially, try going smaller with every layer. And if you do so, then it will create a sense of scale, because the higher up you go, the smaller it gets, so it makes it seem really tall. Kind of like how when you look at the bottom of a very tall structure from right next to it, it seems a lot taller than it really is. Think of that effect and try utilizing it. If I'm standing here, and I have the darkness there and it gets smaller and smaller, it makes it seem like it's stretching towards the clouds, which makes it seem a lot taller, and that is your goal. So space your floors higher up and ignore the roofs for now. Now, with the layers starting to come into place, each one four blocks away from each other, you can see I can really start building the pagoda, and I built the first roof here. And the inside is not done yet, but the basic shape is there. And it's kind of complicated. And what you need to do is you have to start in the middle, and then you want to go up. Ironically, I got this mixed up, so now I have a really weird roof here. But you can see how it doesn't matter too much as long as you still have the moving around. So essentially, you start up high at the edges, and then you go maybe 5 blocks, then down one, and then 5 more blocks, and down another. And while I accidentally inverted that, still, the idea is there. And hopefully, you don't make that mistake like I did. But fortunately, it shouldn't affect the build too much. And if you are really angry at it, well, you can always just change it. And I think I'll do that. Essentially, make your corners higher than the middle, and then you repeat that for each layer, getting smaller and smaller, just as the walls do. You can see here, I go from 333 to 232, then 212, and then 5, and then 3. And also notice how the balconies get smaller. Although, the top balcony is going to have no fences on certain sides to allow elytra access. So essentially, Build your layers, and then build the roof by going to the corner. Just a little thing here, you know, you can pause here in order to get a better idea of what exactly you're doing. Because I'm going to be honest, this part's really hard. I don't care if you have to copy it exactly. Because, yeah, it took me a while to do this too. Now, I've smoothed out this middle piece to be a little bit lower. The insides aren't finished, but what I recommend is lining them with another block like mangrove planks. Although that part's not crazy important, you could already just do more tiles. And now, here's a simplified version of what the roof looks like. It goes three blocks out from the railing, might have to change for the smaller layers. And then, I start out down here, making sure that it never goes below this nether brick. If it does, then it's going to cause issues. And then I have five blocks here, four, and then another five going up and back down and back up. You might want to make it more extreme, although if you built one differently then that could create issues, but hopefully you're building them consistently. And then once you do that, you just put down the slabs like this. I highly recommend slabs for this. And then as you do this, well, it's not going to be too crazy. Of course, the extra details are going to come in later to make it more pagoda-like, but this is a very good base. For now, just fill it in, make sure you have some sort of blocks up there in order to connect your layers. And then, right here, I have some dark oak, just to give an example. 
Although it might be a little tall, still, it makes the pagoda taller and thus more interesting to look at from a distance. You can see here, despite being unfinished, it's one of the focal points of this area besides these ridiculously picturesque mountains that I don't touch for some reason. So you get the idea, if it's taller, then it's more interesting to look at. Right here, all the roofs are in place except for the very tallest one. And you can see, it looks pretty decent, and it wasn't actually that hard to build. While you can do something crazy advanced and spend a ton of time on these roofs, this method is actually quite easy with just doing the numbers where I have 555, five, five, and then going back up, mirroring it, and then I add some slabs to keep it nice and smooth. On the corners, I go a bit higher in order to make it better, and then I add some slabs in order to make sure that none of these tiles will poke out like that. And while that might create weird edge cases depending on how you build it, it's a pretty sound method. And then you space them out, even if you accidentally make mistakes and make some roofs closer to each other than others, still, it ends up making a pretty decent roof design. And now you can continue with connecting each floor. Do your stairs and such, do some support beams going outward, maybe make some out of crimson, and don't forget to have some lanterns hanging down with chains. That way the place is nice and well lit. And don't forget about lighting in general. If you turn this thing to nighttime, you should be able to see it decently well. Because, well, you can see in its current state, there's only sea pickles at the bottom, and it looks pretty drab. So make sure you always have that lighting for both aesthetics and safety. Right here, with all the gaps between each roof standardized and a couple miscellaneous changes, it's now time to do each floor. And while you do your simple connections to the top, whether it be really tall like this because you made the roof a little too high, or it's something more like this, well, it's worth covering what you should be doing. First off, make sure the balconies are perfectly accessible. While you might want to do this, no, that's not how balconies work. So, make sure you don't do what I just demonstrated. Make sure it's fully walkable without changing your elevation. And then, make sure you have some extra detailing. You can see I included a bunch of stairs and trap doors in order to make it a bit more smooth. I even included a crimson button above the doors, so that way it's just all the more detailed. And then for windows, instead of glass, I went with open fence gates, specifically crimson ones. And now, you don't go ultra modern. Instead, it's a bit more realistic, even though this entire thing's kind of just made out of dark oak and a mushroom stem. You know, very realistic blocks along with the white wool, but the idea is there. So all you need to do is go into each floor, make a slight variant of this design, make sure it links up pretty well with the roof, Sometimes there's simple block limitations due to slabs, so you just have to put trapdoor, and that's all you can really do, unless you want to do slabs, and then you just go to each floor and make a variant of it. It's not the hardest concept to do, but if you're struggling, perhaps look up other designs, because looking at pictures of pagodas is often pretty useful. I had to do a few myself in order to make sure I was doing the roofs right. Now. For the pagoda, I've added some more traditional lighting to replace the lanterns that hung from the ceiling. And this is really just more of an aesthetic change, but it means I can use less lanterns. Of course, don't remove them completely since they add a little bit of extra detail into the build. And then, I went through each floor, continuing to decorate it. And you can see, nothing super new here, I just added slabs here to fix a minor mistake. And then, I started introducing red glazed terracotta into the palette as I went up, along with changing the pattern of the lanterns. If you're wondering how I did this, blackstone, chain, blackstone, shroom light surrounded with crimson trapdoors, and then a mangrove slab. And then going all the way up, I used some more, making sure to randomly rotate it in order to make it more interesting, playing around with depth, and not forgetting my buttons. And now, I have every floor except the top's exterior completed. And in order to do the top, it's not actually as difficult as you might think. First off, you just start as if it was another normal floor, doing this simple design around, where it's not really like a consistent design, but the idea is there. But instead of cutting it off after three blocks inward, you just keep going and make it another point. So think of it like this, how I go here, 
Well, then I want one in the middle, and maybe even make it slightly taller. So that way, you have your tall points on the sides, on the corners, I mean, and then one really tall one in the middle. Look at reference photos in order to make sure that the idea is there, because this is a very important part of the build. If you mess this part up, it really damages the build. Right here, you can see the roof is now done. Of course, I had the same design from down here, but just a little bit thicker. But in the middle, I have this point where I start going up, higher and higher, some walls, and then the lightning rod. And this part's just for accuracy. It's optional. And then, you have basically your entire pagoda completed. Of course, don't forget your lanterns, your extra detailing here, fence gate windows. And now, it's time to do a few extra minor details and then move on to the interior. First off, try incorporating a little bit of greenery onto the structure. It might look a little too empty at this point, so you should always try including it. Even if you don't, it still looks like a completely majestic structure. Even from over a cliff, you can see it, and it's quite tall, quite cool looking. I mean, I'm kind of patting myself on the back here, but still. And yeah, try incorporating various plants, maybe some cherry leaves, and don't forget about having the option to change the floor. If you have something like this going on, where you have bamboo under this weird table thing, feel free to remove it and just add dark oak under it. And then once you have those things, add a spiral staircase going through the middle. And that part is quite easy. And don't forget to, well, do the same treatment that you did on the exterior to the interior so it funnels up into that hole there. Anyways, a quick spiral staircase tutorial, probably like the 50th one on the channel. Don't use oak slabs for this, I'm going to say that. What you do is you do a slab, and then you just keep doing this over and over. And then you'll eventually reach the top. Of course, don't use oak unless you're already using it in your palette. Right here, you can see the landscaping has been added. What I did is change the stairs to full blocks. Then I added trapdoors here to hide the podzle that they grow on, mainly because it's just a nice block. And then I make them smaller as I go up, along with a little extra stuff going on with the bamboo. This was not here before and added some much needed greenery. And now, it's time to go on the inside. And I'm going to be completely honest, the insides are actually meant to be empty. And while I'm still going to decorate mine, still, you should probably think about what you want your pagoda to be used for. Is it a base? Or is it just a structure? If so, you can probably leave it mostly empty. Otherwise, if it's a base, you might have a little bit of problem with fitting all your storage, but otherwise it should work out. Now for each four, you must play the game of how do I fit my lighting while still funneling to the little ring at the top that the spiral staircase goes through. And I played this game for every four. Used some stripped stems on the sides and then switched to planks, mangrove in there, and then I did a little extra here. You can see how I use stairs and slabs along with a little bit of red glazed terracotta to add that nice accent, along with making the room not square by adding these pillars. And then, right here, I pretty much did the same thing, nothing terribly interesting for this floor, but I made sure to add some lanterns and lighting. And then for the top floor, well, I didn't exactly do much. In this floor, there wasn't much that I could do, besides add more lighting. I added a little bit of bookshelves to finish off this floor, and then I have some smooth quartz because there's no snow stairs, and a red glazed terracotta to hang a lantern on. Now I have access to the top, and what do you know? Your pagoda is, for most purposes, complete. For now, what I recommend doing is filling up the rest of the inside with things like bookshelves, basic survival necessities, and here's a quick little interior design tip. Even though this isn't exactly the kind of build you'd put carpet in, you can still do things like shelves. Place down some trapdoors of any kind. I personally like dark oak, in case you haven't figured it out yet, it's my favorite block in the game. And then you can put candles, decorated pots on it, even some sea lanterns, I mean sea pickles, don't put sea lanterns on that, that would be really weird. But still, some pots and then some candles, it doesn't even matter if they're lit, as long as they're there. Then I have some, well, candles. You can light them. That adds extra lighting. And then you also want to have a few barrel piles for storage if you need that. Simply think about what you want and try putting it into the build. Now, 
Going into the interior, you can see it has all the necessities. Your smelting, your crafting, storage, etc. Although it doesn't have the capacity to fit things like enchanting, still, it can fit the majority of the things you need. Of course, take notes, the shelves, the decorated pots, extra storage hidden around, you know, creative things like that. You should try incorporating little things like that, even change the four. Right here, not changing the four was a mistake. I'd recommend changing it to a, some sort of plank, although it's probably not going to be pictured, so I recommend changing it. Right here, I have anvils, but otherwise, as your fours get smaller, you don't really have to do much because there physically isn't much you can do anymore. Although you could make these pillars go up, that inhibits walkability, but considering there isn't anything on this floor in the first place, I don't think it's an issue. And then up here, well, I mean, what are you going to do? The most you could possibly do would either be placing some shelves that would make the place cramped or a flower pot right here. And now your pagoda is 99% done. The only thing left I really have to say is one minor change to the roof. Here's the thing about pagoda roofs. Although I initially said you want to build it like a normal roof with a point in the middle, you actually want to connect these points to this main part, and maybe even make the staircase a bit more sharp like this. And, wow, asymmetry in my build? Wow. But anyways, you should try making it a bit more pyramid-like and connect these parts in. Now that you have your initial base in, it should be much easier rather than having to juggle a ton of things at once. Right here, you can see I have a more pyramid shape here, and then I have these corners connect up to this piece better. And now, with those minor adjustments, this really looks like a pagoda now. And you can see, well, it's complete. Even if it's kind of complex for admittedly not very spacious space, it's certainly a landmark. Compare it to something more simple like this, you know, it's not the craziest house ever, I could definitely do better, and then you see that in the distance. This is certainly a way to, well, flex on people, but also just decorate your cherry groves, because this is a exceptionally rare biome. Finding uh, one the size of this, well, you might not find that for 8,000 blocks on average, so this is a good way to spend the space in this biome both by using the watercolor and by fitting in with the vibe with the various other colors in the build. Ironically, it never even uses cherry wood the whole time. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, well, a comment below. I know I skip around a little too much sometimes, so if there's any parts you're having trouble with, I can help clarify. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsaw.